I'm really excited, guys. You guys have been watching my latest videos. Thank you so much. So many of you have subscribed lately. Thank you. And if you haven't yet, hit the button. Join our YouTube family. We have a lot to do today. Let's get right to it. I'm Loud Boy, and this is the Loud Boy Experience. Let's go. As my friend Tina says, it's great to be on the wake up list. What does that mean, the wake up list? Well, I'm grateful for every day I get these days. I had a heart condition, a genetic thing, quadruple bypass surgery. So let's just say I'm very thankful to be alive. I'm thankful for every day I get to open my eyes and look outside and see that it's another beautiful day on earth. I'm thankful for that. So I love Miss Tina. You call it the wake up list. And I'm thrilled to be on the list. I'm thrilled to be alive. I've gotten so many amazing comments, inundated, flooded with comments. A lot of these are from my recent Rush video, the one where I talk about how Rush has inspired all of us, but also the next generation of musicians. Thank you guys for watching that. Thank you guys for writing me. All your personal stories, the tours you've been to, the songs that you love, and how Neil Peart, even though you've never met him, has meant the world to you. What did you do today? Hmm. I bet it pales in comparison to what my friend Katie did. She saved multiple lives. I work with her at the restaurant, but she's also an EMT in a local town. And in that town, she actually saved a baby's life today. She administered CPR and saved a baby's life. Thank you, Katie, for saving a life. Another gentleman was in a completely a horrific car wreck. Busted up, shattered bones everywhere. Even his C2 had been separated. The guy could have been in full paralysis. And she brought him to the hospital. And she fought for him and said, no, not triage. He needs a room. He needs doctors now. She fought to save his life as well. Katie, wow. <laughs> what I did today sounds like a joke compared to saving lives. Thank you, Katie, for saving lives and being out there and doing that. It blew my mind. Your stories blow my mind. Thank you for sharing them. But more importantly, thank you for saving lives. Man, that's what Katie did today. <laughs> that guy deserves a medal. Somebody get that guy a medal right now. The viewer mail that you guys have sent me recently has blown my mind. And you guys have shared so much with me. And just your, your passion and your intelligence and your compassion. Uh, one of which is after my last podcast... Cyberspace Films. Hey, buddy. Thank you for writing about Sean. Here's an update about Sean. Sean, a gentleman that I work with, his daughter was in a really bad situation, hospitalized. I've been told in a coma, she's out of it. And she's doing a lot better. And I saw Sean at work tonight. And it was a pleasure to see him once again. And I'm thrilled that his daughter is doing well. So there's an update on Sean. I'm glad you're doing well. I'm glad your daughter is doing well, Sean. Cyberspace Films, thank you, bro, for your compassion, for reaching out, and for mentioning that. For those of you who did pray, thought about, wrote me about this, thank you. This community that we have, right? The people, th you guys are awesome. Thank you. In cyberspace films, dude, thank you for being here since the beginning. It means a lot to me. Recently, I made a Rush video, a video about our favorite band, Rush. 
It's called A Rush of Inspiration, How the Progressive Trinity Influenced the Next Generation. I've gotten a ton of comments from you. I wanted to read a few of them because I wanted to share with you some of the thoughts of our fellow Rush fans. One person just wrote, Incredible Band. Thank you, bud. Another one, Alien Shore, one of their best. Bass line is outstanding. Lyrics great. Guitar amazing. One of my favorite Rush songs. Also, someone made the steak soup that I made recently. If you, uh, on my channel, there's a Plaza 3 steak soup, and they wrote, I made it, and it was delicious. Good. I'm glad that wasn't false advertising. Good. Yeah, you can check out my cooking videos. More are coming, guys. In fact, a friend of mine, Sean, had an idea tonight. For me, me to make a copycat recipe of a new pasta we have at work, I might just do that. So, details coming up. But yeah, more cooking videos are coming. I promise. I hope. <laughs> so, more Rush Mail. Alex has so many components to his playing. He's an incredibly beautiful player. The emotion in his, in his solos and his arpeggios are spine-chilling. True. Alex's arpeggios are beautiful and amazing, and a core part of Rush. Alex is amazing. I did not mean to say anything that lowers my estimation of him in my Rush video. N nothing could be further from the truth. Alex Lifeson's one of the greatest guitar players of all time. There, I said it, period. End of sentence, let's move on. Blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. The music and lyrics from Rush inspired me in more ways than I could ever have dreamed. They have definitely shaped me into the man that I am. Ooh, thank you, Jim. John writes, I often say, Neil Peart taught me more than any other person in my life, and we never met. Feel you. Me too. With regard to the last podcast, Tina, thank you. Ah, oh, this is so lovely, so adorable. I can't wait to watch more and more. <laughs> that warmed my heart. Thank you, Miss Tina. The Rush video. This guy writes first. What an honor. Nicely done. Thank you, bud. Karen says, best show ever. She's talking about 12 Monkeys. I did a short about 12 Monkeys. More 12 Monkeys stuff is coming up. With regard to my Hurricane and Flood Victims video, Amelia wrote, well said, amen. Thank you, Amelia. After that, another woman about the hurricane video wrote, Amen. Even if you can't donate to one of the many organizations who are there helping, prayer is free and it is life-changing. Yes, country mama. Love your name. Prayer is free and it is life-changing. Well said. Why we miss Neil Peart? Choose the light and not the darkness. Nice. Nice, bro. And again, I mentioned this earlier, Cyberspace Films. And he said, just started watching. And I wanted to throw out an extra shout to Sean. We all need a Sean in our lives. You're right, bro. We do. And Sean, I'm glad things are going better for you. Thank you, Cyberspace Films. You're awesome, bro. <laughs> Thank you for being here. All right. Jim writes, this is with regard to a Neil Peart update. And the, an update with regard to Silver Surfers. And he writes, I am also waiting for my copy. And I reported in that video that Silver Surfers keeps being, being delayed and being delayed. Not quite sure why they say it's to improve the quality. Great. Hope so. But clearly there's something going on. And Neil Peart's last book, Silver Surfers, is taking quite a while. Why we miss Neil Peart. And this guy wrote, Man, I just want to say, I feel you, man. I just finished Getty's memoir, and it felt like I felt the pain of losing Neil all over again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure I can read that. I, I want to read it. I know about it. Haven't gotten it yet. But I have a feeling it would be a tough read. I'm glad you did, and I'm glad you wrote. Thank you, bro. So that's just a sample. That is a sample of the comments and viewer mail that we've gotten here at the Loud Boy Experience. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for taking the time to write me and to share. Thank you. 
And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. More Rush videos are coming. More Zelda, music, movies, and reviews for TV and movies. All of that is still coming, and a lot more of it. On the Loud Boy Experience, Henry Cavill, or as I like to call him, Superman. The Man of Steel. As an actor, as a person, I really like Henry Cavill. I like his work, his work ethic, the fact that he is through and through real. He stands up for the things that he's creating. And now, coming up, really big news. I'm going to try to go in order here. Of course, we know he's Superman. He's now the cavalry. Beyond that, he's going to be in a reboot of Highlander. Of course, we know about Warhammer. 40K is an executive producer on that. Whether or not he'll act in it, I'm not quite sure. Of course, a movie like that without Henry. Yeah, dude, please get in front of the camera. Any movie's better with that. And as you know, recently I also reported on Ungentlemanly Warfare. You should, guys should watch that movie. Henry Cavill, Alan Richson, fantastic movie. But then the news of the week is this. Henry Cavill is going to be in a motion picture version of Voltron. Yeah. You know what Voltron is, right? Oh, so you're not from the 80s. Well, for those of you who don't know what Voltron is, Voltron had many different iterations. Voltron is basically, it's, you know, it's this cool Japanese thing where you have, you know, five robots form one big super robot. I have one right here. This right here. This is a Voltron. I'm actually missing one of them. But these were lion bots, okay? Each one of these is a separate ship, if you will. A lion robot ship. And then they all form together into one super robot. Okay, so, yeah, this is Voltron, original, vintage, 40-something-year-old Voltron toy. Henry Cavill's going to be in a movie version of this. That's right. Henry Cavill and Voltron. Pretty cool, huh? Henry Cavill, I can't say enough about his work and who he is as a person. I really respect him from what I know, and he's one of my favorite actors. To me, he'll always be Superman. Henry Cavill will always be Superman. Sorry. And again, if they were smart, they would do what they did with Robert Downey Jr., where they back up a truck full of cash and say, please come back to Marvel. This is what James Gunn should do with Henry Cavill. Back up a truck full of cash to Henry Cavill's house and go, please come back to DC and be Superman. With a, actually, with a good writer and a good director that respects the lore and respects the comic books. We need Henry Cavill back. He is Superman. To me. And he will be. I don't know if you're going to find a good replacement. Not for me. You'd have to really blow my mind. That being said, Henry Cavill and Voltron. Anyway, sounds pretty cool. On the planet of Krypton. A planet whose fate had been sealed. The planet was doomed. And two brave parents sent off their infant son to Earth. He then grew up in a simple life on a farm, the Kent farm. Of course, this is Clark Kent, who later became Superman. There's another young man, Peter Parker. He lived in New York City with his aunt and uncle. He lost his parents. And then he was bitten by a radioactive spider. He got superpowers. He lost his uncle. He learned what true responsibility with great power comes true and great responsibility. And of course, I'm talking about Spider-Man. Another young man grew up in Gotham, or just outside Gotham. Very rich, unlike Mr. Parker, unlike Clark Kent. Very, very wealthy, wealthy family. And they went into town. And then his parents were killed in front of him. He grew up to be a vigilante, but my favorite superhero, Batman. Yeah, talk about Bruce Wayne. Another young boy grew up on Tatooine. You know where I'm going with this. Another farmer. Except this was a moisture farm on a desert planet in the world of Star Wars. 
on Tatooine. His name was Luke. And one day his whole destiny changed when an old wizard, I mean Jedi, came his way. And he went off on an adventure. He met his family, his sister, his father. Yeah, his father. I'm talking about Luke Skywalker, who became a great Jedi. These are all heroes that I love and adore. These are heroes that I've read in comic books and I've watched their movies and, and some had TV shows and I've followed them through the years and I'm, I'm the kid who used to run around and I begged my mom to get a couple of safety pins in one of her towels and I'd safety pin that towel to my back so I could run around and fly like Superman. That was me. Still is me. Just telling my son the other day that, yeah, your, your dad's 12. And Nate, Nate responded. He said, I'm 10. I said, I know. I'm only a couple years older than you. Because inside, I still feel that way. I mean, heck, just look around this room. It's a 12-year-old. <laughs> These are all origin stories. Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, Luke Skywalker. We all have an origin story. I have an origin story, <laughs> one that has been, the details of which have been further revealed to me just today. My mom, she's a big part of my origin story, and my dad too, but it was my mom who carried me. And then I find out my origin story includes this. I was, I started, my origin story started, meaning I was conceived, there you go. In a small town in Arkansas. Yeah. My origin story starts in Arkansas. I guess I've always known that. I've always been very proud to say that I'm born in New Hampshire. Live free or die, baby. Yeah, I'm very proud to be from New England and, quote, from New Hampshire. But my origin I really started... I started in Arkansas. And then, on top of that, my mom was in college at the time. She was a senior in college. I guess both my parents were. And I've always loved the story that I'm in her belly. Okay? I'm in the womb. And she was a music major. Or at least she was taking a, a music class, like music appreciation. And... She's sitting there, and they'd be playing these classical music and different types of music in music class, and I would just be, I'd just be kind of kicking and thumping away inside my mom's belly. It kind of explains a lot: the drumming, my love of music, my love of Rush and Neil Peart. Yeah, from the womb, I was getting that music, which I then carried on the tradition. I've got the big headphones, as you may have seen in movies and TV, and I put them on my wife's belly for her pregnancies, and she would be playing them classical music. I'd come home from work, and she'd be playing classical music to our babies in the belly. You know, it's supposed to, in, in, you know, increase their IQ. Yeah, it did that. My kids are are brilliant, brilliant. I've always said that our kids would either grow up to be criminal masterminds. Or geniuses that would save the world. Yeah, one of the two paths, right? Yeah, how do you use your genius either for good or for not? And luckily, they've all pretty much gone the way of, of the good. No, they have. I shouldn't have said pretty much. So yes, I'm rocking away, bebopping along to whatever music is playing inside her belly. Then I find this out. So that was good for my mind. I then find this out today, that she also took gymnastics when I was in her belly. Okay, let, let's, let, let's do a little frame of context here. Frame of reference. I'll kind of let you know what I'm talking about. I was basically born without the top part of my spine. We don't know if it broke off. I've had multiple neck surgeries. I've worn halo braces. I've mentioned this before to you guys. And now I find out she, that she took gymnastics. So she took music. That was good for my mind. And the gymnastics, that was great for my spine. Jeez, everything, everything started to make sense now. 
Everything started, in fact, she first discovered that she was pregnant when she's jumping on a trampoline and she felt woozy. And I'm probably, I was probably inside going, yeah, I feel woozy too. You want to, you want to stop? You know, I'm trying to like grow here. Amazing. So yeah, good for the mind, great for the spine. Music and gymnastics. That's my origin story. I'm no superhero, I can tell you that much. <laughs> it just blew my mind when my mom told me that. Amazing. <laughs> I love you, Mom. Thank you for sharing that. This is Nintendo Sound Clock Alarmo. An interactive alarm clock that's out of the ordinary. Alarmo. That's right, you heard me right. Alarmo. That's right, Nintendo has an alarm clock. Hello, um, Christmas present. I want an Alarmo, please. Yeah, I, 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 it sounds really cool. It has different sounds from the games, uh, including Zelda and Mario. And here, from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The music combines with sound effects created by your movement, so you can start the day feeling like you're in the kingdom of Hyrule. And there's a lot more to it. I don't have one yet. Otherwise, I'd be holding up my Alarmo like I brought out my Voltron here. So, yes, Alarmo is out. I'd love to have one for Christmas. So if you guys have want to get me a Christmas gift, please, get me an Alarmo. I know, I have a phone, but I still want one. I, I, I'll put it right back here. I, actually, if you guys get me an Alarmo, it'll be in the shot every bloody time. And I'll, be, I'll trigger sound effects and everything. It'll be a whole thing. Okay, now I'm getting ideas. For a limited time, Nintendo Sound Clock Alarmo is only available for purchase online by paid Nintendo Switch online members in the US and Canada. Welcome to the biggest Mario Party yet! Super Mario Party Jamboree! This past week, I get an email from Nintendo. See, I pre-ordered it. All of a sudden, on my desktop of my Switch, the icon for Mario Party Jamboree. I'm like, no way. I thought that was coming out on the 17th. At the time, it was the 10th, a week early. Do they pre do pre-orders a week early? Hey, do they do, they do pre-orders? They don't. No, it wasn't real. No. Nope. That was really mean, Nintendo. I thought I was going to be able to like click it or at least click and download it and play. I thought I was going to play Mario Party. I had to go to work that night. I was bummed out about that because I'm like, I want to play Mario Party. And so I came home from work, tried to... No, it's just an icon, a placeholder. That was, that was a mean trick because I... Yeah, I know. I'm the bonehead who thought it was here early. I know. But still... Don't put it on my desktop and don't expect me to go click on it and play it. It's that simple, Nintendo. No, I love you guys. And where's the Switch too? At least give me something. All right, Sean, my good friend Sean. I work with him. He has been, he's ahead of me now in Echoes and more Echoes of Wisdom is coming. I'm glad I talked to Sean tonight though. He's way ahead of me. He's on or has beaten the second temple gotten to what he calls the open world part of Echoes of Wisdom, he got me excited again. I haven't yet been able to make the second installment. And here's the thing, guys. With regard to Echoes of Wisdom, I know that there's a lot of content already there. Full game walkthroughs. What's with that? And it makes my little effort of doing section one of Echoes of Wisdom look like, who cares? But... For the almost 200 of you that have watched it, thank you. And I'm going to make it more episodes. And here's the thing. I'd love for you guys to still join me as I play through Echoes of Wisdom. And here's why. It's about you and I hanging out together. And if you, you enjoy the company that we share, then I hope that's an added value to you. Because, yeah, you can go watch it right now. Man, am I just shooting myself in the foot? <laughs> hey! Go watch something else. No, I'm not saying that. But yeah, this episode two is coming. I shouldn't have said all that, should I? Yeah, it must be a Tuesday. 
loud boy shooting off his mouth again, right? Here's the thing, though. Sean, after we got done talking about Echoes of Wisdom, and dude, thank you. A, thank you for subscribing, Sean. B, thank you for watching my videos. And C, thank you, Sean, for your update on Echoes. I'm now excited. I want to go, I want to make this happen and play through it some more. Thank you, Sean. But beyond that, Sean asked uh, my friend Hayden, who I do also a podcast with, JKL Podcast, it's on the channel. Um, Sean asked kind of both of us in, the, in our, you know, we were near each other. And Sean asked, dude, I just got to know, where's the money coming from? He was talking about this. My room. All the stuff back there. That I, you know, with which I surround myself. Hayden said to Sean, dude, that's from a lifetime of, and it's true. Everything you see here is a lifetime of things that I've just gotten over the years and years and decades. And, and now you kind of just see it here. No, it's not like I went out and spent a bunch of money and got autographed posters and hand-painted things with Rush and, and that autographed Alton Brown back there and the TV hanging on the wall. This was all built one thing at a time over time. Many of these are many, many years old. And what you're seeing back there, what you're seeing in this room behind me is a visual representation of who I am, the things that I like to do, things that I watch, the things that I listen to, and the things that I play. These are the things that I love. And my Avid system as well, of course, right? The things that I like to edit with. So yeah, that's that's what it is. So Sean, yeah, this was not a big, big expenditure of money. Sure, over time you could add it up, but anyway. But thanks for the question. Nintendo is developing a Zelda movie. And of course, this could be an amazing thing. And this could not be an amazing thing. The operative word here is Nintendo. I really hope that Nintendo has a lot of control over this movie uh, at the executive and at the producer level. That's going to make a big difference. The director is Wes Ball. He worked on the Maze Runner movies. And the writer is Derek Connolly. Let's see, what has he done here? Derek Connolly has worked on, he wrote, wrote the Jurassic World movies. Not off to the best start there. And let's see, he also wrote De Detective Pikachu, I think. Yes, he wrote Detective Pikachu. I didn't like that one as much as the Mario movie. The Pikachu movie was half animation, half live action. And of course, the Mario movie, completely animated. Now, I love the Mario movie. And I'm like, eh. The best part of that movie, of course, was Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu. That was the best part as far as the writing. Eh. So, I, I'm kind of a mixed opinion right now. The bigger thing is this, though. A, I think if Nintendo has creative control, producing it, executive producing it, making sure that Derek Connolly writes a script that respects all of Zelda, and even if they take just one story, whether it's A Link to the Past or Ocarina of Time or one of the more modern tales of the Zelda games, as long as he takes that and respects it completely, the history the timeline, the lore of the Legend of Zelda series, it could be phenomenal. Of course it could. Now here's my biggest thing that I've given a lot of thought to, is that Lord of the Rings. Why do I bring up Peter Jackson's trilogy? Completely shot in New Zealand because of this. The Zelda movie, I believe, needs to be live action, through and through, on location, you got to go to a mountaintop, you go to a mountaintop. You need some kind of fields and plains, or you need Hyrule Field. You can CGI the castle, but make sure that field's real. You're down by a river, make sure you're by a river, okay? No animated stuff. I mean, of course, I know everything's a mixture these days. We have to use background plates, and we have to animate certain things, and we add background elements, and we might change the sky or do secondary color correction. We might do all these things in post-production. That's fine to add elements but it needs to be live action as much in camera as possible. This needs to feel real. We need to be truly taken out of the game and brought into, quote, the real world. Actual in camera, shot through a lens, action and scenery and people. I think that's going to make all the difference in the world. And in fact, that can make up for 20% of a script's not being very good. Is, is that the in-camera action in the scenery works. 
there's plenty of locations around the world. A bunch here here in the States, uh, also New Zealand, Australia. There's a bunch of places where you can get phenomenal locations that look a lot like Hyrule, like the Kingdom of Hyrule. I don't see why not. So that's my biggest thing. I want the Zelda movie, and if I were working on it, 100%, if I were directing the Zelda movie, I would put my, my fist down. No, instead of not paying all these guys to animate, paying and shoot stuff on green screen, and to shoot, you know, no. I would say, no, we're going, we're going there. We're going to set up, and we're going to do it the hard way because it's going to pay off huge dividends to shoot this in camera through the lens. That's what I want for the Zelda movie. I think it could make a huge difference. And man, I hope it's good. We're talking one point whatever billion dollars. If you do this well, the Mario movie made that much. This has the potential for that as well. And here's why. This will harken back to the love and success of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. People could be reminded of that. Could re be reminded of the journey and the characters and the battles and the love and the loss and the bravery and the heroes and all of that could be encapsulated. All of that which makes Tolkien's work then envisioned by Peter Jackson on screen so brilliant. The greatest trilogy ever made, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Imagine if we got 80% of that in the Zelda movie. Imagine what a journey and what adventure we could go on. Oh, I wish I was working on this movie. So Nintendo, if you need anybody, I'm right here. I'm right here. I'll give my contact info. I was at work, and our manager, our general manager, Chris, he, uh, <laughs> I told someone, it was Sean, Sean suggested that I remake this pasta that we have at work now. And I may just do that like a copycat version. I already have ideas to tweak it and make it better. I tell Sean my idea for that. Yeah, I need to do that. Chris pipes up. He's over here behind me working the expo line for the kitchen. And he said, um, <laughs> he said, oh, yeah, Eric, what Nintendo game did you get that from? And I just said, touche. He recently found out about the Loudbore experience about this channel and the things that we're doing here, our little family. He just found out about it. And by the way, thank you, Chris, for checking out some of my videos. It means a lot to me, dude. Uh, but man, that was, that was a, a good dig. That was a good joke. He, you know, I'm like, yeah, you know, I should make this pasta and I'll add tomatoes, some crushed red pepper, and I might change the oil and maybe the type of pasta, you know, I'm coming up with ideas on the fly in my brain. When then Chris like, yeah, what Nintendo game did that come from? Of course, my reply would be, uh, we have a lot of cooking games. In fact, I can cook in Zelda. I didn't say that. He would have really razzed me for the rest of the night had I come back with actual examples of video game cooking. I just said, touche. <laughs> he got me there. Chris later was showing me, he's a, he used to be a, a competitive uh, bow hunter. And this is related to Zelda, of course. Where, you know, compound bows, and he did competition. And he was actually sponsored, and that was really cool. Then he was showing me his long bows, and how he, you know, he used target practice, and some of the, he showed me pictures on his phone. It was great. Thank you for sharing all that, Chris. I do find it fascinating. I then show him a picture of this big bear that takes out my parents' bird feeders, right? As if the squirrels weren't a problem, they have bears. Where do they live? Vermont. Of course they have black bears batting around their, their bird feeders and eating all their stuff. So the, I, I, I show him this picture, and Chris is like, dude, if they need help, you just say the word. I have a bow, and I'll travel. So I love that. Chris is ready to go snipe this bear for my parents. I don't think my parents would want that, nor is it their bear to be allowed to be harvested, to be taken out. I finally saw the movie If, Imaginary Friend. This past spring, I made two reaction videos to the trailer. And you guys can find those on my channel. Guys, I am thrilled that I took the time. I am thrilled that I saw this movie. This movie is an amazingly beautiful movie. 
It is a story about how as children, and we just talked about this, didn't we? And I showed you my Star Wars figures and I asked a question. Have kids lost the ability to use their imaginations and their minds? You know, instead of being force fed all that content online. Why aren't they playing with their toys and using their imaginations? Are they? Have that, has this been lost? And it's crazy that I finally watched the If movie today. And it's about that very subject. The fact that when you grow up, you stop relying on the imaginative world in which you lived and played when you were young. It's about that loss of innocence, and that loss of childhood. But the great thing is, the things that you love can never truly be forgotten. That's straight out of the movie. This is true. The other spectacular part of If, though, written and directed by Jim from The Office, John Krasinski. He wrote and directed this, and of course starring Ryan Reynolds. The If movie portrays Men, male role models, father figures, and fathers, the way they should be portrayed. It's a beautiful thing. John Krasinski, congratulations. I'm proud of you for representing men and who they are and who they should be to their children and the people around them and to their wives and to society. Beautiful. The message that If portrays about men is beautiful, and it is right, and it is correct, and is the way that should be. Hollywood has been on a destruction tour, a wrecking ball to men in general for decades. Think back to a litany, a massive list of sitcoms at least through the last 40 plus years, the bumbling dad, the smart and together mom, the slob dad, the dad who forgets stuff, the mom who scorns him for not picking up the kids, or the, the, the slob dad who's watching football because he's just a big slob. He's a waste of space. You know what I'm talking about. This has been a go-to established narrative for Hollywood for decades. Sometimes life doesn't always have to be fun, you know? Well, that's true. Very true. Doesn't stop us from trying, though. If comes along, it shows what a father should be, can be, to his young daughter. It's a beautiful message, a beautiful story. And I already resonate with John Krasinski. And his character, Jim from The Office, is my favorite character from The Office. Now, I connect so deeply with his character as the dad in the movie If. Oh, hello. Uh -huh. You have to stop. Never. This is a reunion of Steve Carell and John Krasinski, both from The Office, as you know. This is also produced and, of course, stars Ryan Reynolds. And I'm proud of you, Ryan for being part of this project, for your character also being a positive, beautiful male role model to this young girl in a transformative part of her life. She has John Krasinski as the dad, and then she has Ryan Reynolds as a friend. And the story that unfolds is nothing but positive. It is a beautiful story. There's a little twist at the end, pretty big twist. I did figure out ahead of time but you'll enjoy it. Guys, I highly recommend you can buy or rent if, and I believe it's also on Paramount Plus. So guys, check this out today with your kids. It's fine. There are a few too many OMGs in there for me. I don't care for that, but overall, this was a great movie. You can watch it with your kids, or you can just watch it together on date night, or with some friends of yours. Guys, this did not do well in the theaters. I don't know why, but it didn't. So, let's make it happen now. If a fantastic movie for the whole family, check it out today. Dun, 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 dun. 
I hope I'm not copyrighted for that one. Mission Impossible 7. Tom Cruise. Dead Reckoning Part 1. This movie did not do well in the theaters. Top Gun Maverick made one point whatever to two billion dollars. Mission Impossible 7 doesn't. Don't know why. I am a huge, really huge fan of the Mission Impossible movies. I've been watching them since, what was it, 95, 96, 97, somewhere in that ballpark. Mission Impossible 1, Ving Rhames, Ethan Hunt, you know, Tom Cruise. And I'll fast forward all the way to now, Episode 7, Dead Reckoning. I'm a huge fan. I love what he's done with the franchise. He being Tom, executive producer, of course, our star actor. Tom Cruise is arguably, possibly the last true movie star in Hollywood. I like Tom Cruise. I know you guys could list me the negatives, whatever, from jumping on the couch to Scientology. I don't care. What I care about is Tom Cruise as the character I see on screen, and I like that. I like Ethan Hunt, and I like Maverick too, but I like Ethan Hunt a lot more. Heck, my son's name is Ethan. Episode 7 is fantastic. It's very long, pretty darn dense, but it doesn't feel that way as you watch it. It's a joy to watch. And remember, Henry Cavill was in the, what, the last one, Fallout. Guys, if you haven't seen it yet, watch Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 or Mission Impossible 7. It's a great movie. It did not do well in the theaters. I know I keep saying that. I've been saying that a lot lately. Thank you, Hollywood, or whatever powers that be that through the lockdowns basically destroyed theaters. Good job, guys. Brilliant move. Unless you meant to do it. Probably meant to do it. Moving on. Several years ago, I wrote a blog about 12 Monkeys, where I reviewed and recapped entire seasons in a bunch of different episodes from season one all the way to season four. That's on my website. I'll put a link in the description. I did the same with The Expanse. I wrote a blog. I would love to now create what I did in blog form, written word, as video for both 12 Monkeys and The Expanse. And if you guys love 12 Monkeys, if you guys love The Expanse as much as I do, let me know. Drop me a line. I'd love to know just the general take your temperature and interest level out there. I want to start with 12 Monkeys, though. This is a project that I've been wanting to work on for a long time. Go from episode to episode, reviewing, talking about theories and characters and character motivations and plot points and how different plot points from one episode connects to the next episode, connects to the next season, connects to the fourth season. So yeah, and, and look at all the interconnectivity and all the different possibilities with time travel that 12 Monkeys presents, and I would just want to talk about that. It has been an honor, an honor, meeting you guys through your comments and our discussions and back and forth. Thank you for watching my recent Rush videos. I have a lot of videos on my channel about Rush. This most recent one, you guys have overwhelmingly supported it. Thank you. Subscribe if you want to watch more Rush videos in the future. This connects us. Our love of three guys from Canada who formed a band called Rush. I know it seems so simple, right? In its genesis and in the conception and the idea. And yet, the legacy, the 40 plus years of music, all the times that you and I have seen them live, what is that? That's a connection. That's a connection. And this connection, I feel, is strong. It has been an honor and a pleasure. It's been my pleasure hearing from you guys and reach out more. Drop me a comment. One of the original connections I made with Rush, I've mentioned Billy, the older drummer, that showed me and introduced me to Rush. When I was young, it was Mikey. Fast forward... And then I had a friend named Nathan. My son is partly named after him. But also, and by the way, my son's initials, Nathan Eric Patrick Gardner. What is Nathan Eric Patrick Gardner? Yeah, he got my name. Uh, his, uh, this 
first of the two middle names, that's NEP, like Neil. That was an honor to get to do that. And that was before Neil passed. Nathan Eric Patrick, so he's NEP Gardner. I love that I got to give him the same initials as Neil Peart. But it was college. And I met Joel. Not only did Joel love Rush and had all their albums, but he also lo- and knew about and loved Dream Theater. Hello. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. Yeah, Joel. We both started off with the worst roommates one could imagine, respectively for us. This was in the early 90s. Joel's roommate was online all the time. Early 90s, doing DOS-based internet stuff. And in fact, one break, must have been one of the fall breaks, his roommate had met a girl online. Again, there's no pictures. There are no internet browsers. Everything is DOS, text-based. You know Yahoo used to be text-based, by the way? It just said Yahoo, and it had a bunch of word links, you know, entertainment, news, business, whatever. Yeah, that was my first introduction to Yahoo, by the way. So, Joel's roommate meets this girl and goes off. He actually hops on a train like a hobo, and rides out to like Minnesota or something to meet this girl that he met online. I swear, I'm shocked he wasn't murdered out there. Who knows who could have been at the other end of that? Even today with pictures and browsers, we still don't know what kind of creep could... All right, I digress. My roommate, though, you know what I'm into, right? Progressive rock. Pretty hard rock. That kind of stuff. I love jazz. I'm a sax player. I'm a drummer. My roommate was into pop music, but not just pop music. He was basically in a barbershop quartet. I had a stereo, uh, two satellite speakers, subwoofer. I had a six CD changer, a, a, a great receiver, double tape deck. I had my own stereo system that I bought with my hard earned money in high school. Loved my stereo to death. It was my pride and joy at the time. And I'd come back after a long day of school. I'd come back after class. And through my door, I could hear Janet Jackson or Boys to Men or some other music that makes my skin crawl and the paint peel off the walls. The worst freaking music in the world. I, I don't like... And he'd be blaring it on my stereo. He'd be putting his music in my CD, my six... A Denon, I believe. Yeah, was, was it Denon? Uh, six CD changer, right? It had six instead of the five. Like, Sony only had five. Mine had six. He'd be blaring that music. It took a lot of patience to walk into that room and go, Hey, how are things? I bring up these roommates for a reason. I came home one day in my barbershop quartet loving Janet Jackson listening roommate had just moved out. I think he claimed we weren't compatible. (laughs) You have no idea. I think I was as ill suited for him as he was for me. He meaning he felt that. Thank goodness. What's so awesome is without the school being involved or any paperwork or anyone being told, Joel grabbed his comforter and his pillow and plop down on the bed across the room. And the rest is history. Why do I bring up Joel? Well, it was Rush and Dream Theater, but also our love of sci-fi, our love of Lord of the Rings, and all these things that united us, right? And so often that's what these things do. The things we listen to, the things we like to watch, and the things we like to play. Man, for hours we'd play columns. Or for hours, we because I had my, my Genesis back then, right? I brought my Genesis to school, my Sega Genesis. And we'd just play for hours. While we were playing video games on my, on my Genesis, we would play a game of Russian Relay with my CD changer. We put in five really amazing CDs. In the sixth one, right? Like the bullet in the chamber of a revolver that you spin. The sixth one is we, we each had some kind of crap CD, right? Of some horrible music. So yeah, and we just hit random. So the CD changer 
could go for two hours, one disc after another, choosing one song, right? So it would move a disc around, randomly choose one song, and then move a disc to a disc three over here and choose a song, and then back to disc one. But finally, it would get to that sixth disc, and we'd be like, no, yeah, because we'd been shot at that point, right? We lost the game. We found the, the chamber with a bullet in it, the awful song, the awful CD. That was a fun game. Joel, that was, that was awesome, dude. College was a blast, and it got even better when we formed a band. And that band was Goatmeal. Yeah. As in Oatmeal with a G. Goatmeal. We then found a bass player. Joel played guitar. Beautiful, beautiful guitar. We found a bass player with an old Rickenbacker white bass, just like Getty used to play. And it, what blew my mind was that I knew Will was the guy for us. I went to his room. We just start hanging out. We had these common things. We, we all loved Rush. And, and there were different things that united us, right? Rush being a, a primary one. Will gets out his Rickenbacker. He's got a, like a little practice amp, right? You know, as you would in a college dorm room. And he starts just wailing on the best bass part of natural science. All right, just wailing on. He's playing natural science. Little known to him, if I were to choose my favorite Rush song, I would choose a song that I would most want to see live. Like before R40, there was only one song I wanted to see live, and that was Natural Science. I love Natural Science off of Permanent Waves. Possibly my favorite Rush song. I know I've said I can't pick one. Natural science probably is it, and I have my reasons, but musically, lyrically, structurally, conceptually, natural science, in my opinion, is one of their best works ever. That's just my personal opinion. It's what I like. I'm sure that one of you guys is going to write and say, you know what? I don't like natural science for all the reasons you stated. Hey, dude, and by the way, I'm choking. I'm not trying to mock your, your, your comment. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying that, you know, we all have different opinions, right? And my opinion is natural science is brilliant. And I love that song. And what's great is by permanent waves, as you well know, they were already moving away from the multi-phase lengthy song. They were moving away from that into making modern music, weren't they? And of course, this came to a perfect fruition on the masterpiece of moving pictures. But permanent waves led into that. Permanent waves took the past and started kind of putting it through a filter or through a lens or through a gel. And, and the light that shone created these moving pictures from the past. And, that, and to me, that it's a great transitional album that way. A beautiful transitional album. I'm a lyrics guy. I love lyrics. And my favorite lyricist of all time, of course, is Neil Peart. I mean, who else, right? There are three parts to natural science. The tide pools, hyperspace, and part three is permanent waves. The first part, though, it, it draws these comparisons. You know, a tidal pool, right? As the waves crash in, it'll carry small sea life in. And then it leaves behind these pools of water in, like, the crevices of the rocks. And if you've ever been to Maine... Go sometime if you have it. And I love the line, right? The second line of the song is, when the ebbing, ebbing tide retreats along the rocky shoreline, I always think of Maine. Because, again, I grew up in New England, and I love, I love the coastline of Maine, the rocky shoreline. And it leaves behind these tidal pools, these little short-lived galaxies. And what, he, what Neil's talking about, these are microcosms of the bigger picture of the entire galaxy, but also of society, too. And he's drawing all these comparisons between multiple things. These are some of my favorite lyrics of the song. Science, like nature, must also be tamed with a view towards its preservation. Given the same state of integrity, it will surely serve us well. I mean, who writes like that? It will surely serve us well. Art as expression, not as market campaigns. Art as expression not as market campaigns. We'll still capture our imaginations. Given the same state of integrity, it'll surely help us along. The most endangered species, the honest man. 
will still survive annihilation, forming a world state of integrity, sensitive, open, and strong. The most endangered species, the honest man. Hmm. We do miss a lot of honesty these days, don't we? Too many lies. That's why so much of what I say to you is unfiltered. I do my darndest every day of my life not to lie. I think lying is a cancer. And I, I, I hate it. I abhor it. Do we all make mistakes? Yeah, of course. We live in a world of pretense. We live in a world where far too many people are pretending and far too many people are lying to you all the time. And yeah, the most endangered species is the honest man. And therefore, I encourage all of us together, because we got to stick together, guys, to strive to be honest in our lives. Even when it's painful, even when there's repercussions, try to be honest all the time. Don't be that species that dies out. Tonight, I got the kindest compliment from my coworker Ben. He said something very kind. It warmed my heart and it encouraged me. Thank you, Ben. Ben is fantastic. We touched base early on. We each shared some different parts of our lives, difficulties that we're either going through now or, or we used to go through. Because of that, I think we feel a connection. We feel a deeper connection. And because of that, when he sees me, he's got the hugest smile on his face. And he gives me a kind of a side bro hug every time. Ben complimented me tonight out of the blue. And that meant a lot to me, man. I'll keep it between us what you said. But it was kind, flattering. It's about what I do here, right? It's about the Loud Boy experience. You've been watching my videos. Thank you, Ben. But it meant a lot to me. Thank you for the encouragement. I need it. Like any human being, I need encouragement, right? To keep going, to know that our, our path is true, to know that we're doing something that has worth, not only to us, but to others. It's a motivation, isn't it? It's an encouragement. Ben, you gave that to me tonight. In person. Now, in cyberspace, all of you who have written lately, all of you who have subscribe lately, have encouraged me. Thank you. I love doing this. I have a really deep skill set in this area. I can make videos all day long, even half asleep. But knowing that you guys are along for the ride, that you're watching, that you're giving me comments and feedback and telling me stories and sharing things about yourselves, I want to hear from you guys. Leave me a comment below. Like it if you like it. And if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this in the future. I'm Loud Boy. This is the Loud Boy Experience. Episode 5, or Roman numeral V. Live long and prosper. Thank you for being here, guys. I hope you have a good night.